Hi there, this is Mr. Wolf. Today we're going over benchmark number three or I can number three. I can identify and apply complementary and supplementary angles. Okay, some of the vocabulary words that we're going to go over today include vertical angles, complementary angles, supplementary angles, adjacent angles, and a linear pair. There will be lots of vocabulary in this benchmark, so please have your notes ready. Um, hit pause whenever you need a chance to write something down before moving forward. And make sure you understand all the terms because this benchmark lays the groundwork for um, everything we're going to do in the future in geometry. Okay, so first off, let's start by de defining what an angle is and how do we name angles. Well, the definition of an angle is two rays with a common endpoint measured by degrees. You will remember that a ray is simply a line with one endpoint and one end that goes on forever. So in this case, we've got two rays that meet here at B, which is the common endpoint. We call that, that point right there where they meet, we call that the vertex. Okay, the angle would be angle two, or we could call it angle CBD, or we could call it angle DBC. And if we wanted to measure, we would line up the protractor right on the vertex. Okay, we turn it just like that, and we could see that this angle is 10, 20, 30, not quite 40, uh, but maybe about 37 degrees. Okay, I'm using the inside numbers, not the outside, because the outside numbers um, are too big for this particular angle. Okay, um, how do we name an angle? We've got lots of ways we could do. So this example illustrates how many different ways to name an angle. We could call this angle... We can call it angle ADG. Okay, so that would be ADG. Uh, we could call this angle BDG. We could call it BDF, BDE, CDE, CDF, CGDG. And we can go the other way GDE, oh, excuse me, GDC, GD. A. Um, we could do F, D, B. Okay. So lots of different ways to name them, but if you look at our list here, you probably see one thing that is in common. Right down the middle here, D. Why is D always in the middle? Because D is the vertex. That's right. It hinges on that point right there. So that's why that point's in the middle. So in the future, when you're identifying angles, the key, the key letter is always that middle letter. Of course, we could make it easy and just call this angle 2, but we don't always have a number there, so it's important to be able to name both ways. Okay, let's classify some angles. First off, a right angle has a right uh, a 90 degree angle, and that's signified by this box right here. Okay, so we know this angle is 90 degrees. Anything less than 90 degrees, less than, is called acute. Okay, so this angle, the dotted line represents 90. This angle is less than 90, so it's acute. Okay, obtuse is bigger than 90. So you can see this angle right here is larger than 90. So that's 90, or excuse me, obtuse. And a straight angle, okay, so that's actually two right angles. That equals 180. So if we ever hear of a straight angle, it's really just a straight line, um, and that's 180 degrees. Okay, congruent angles, the term congruent means same, so that's angles with the same measure. So if we're talking about angle DAE and angle CAB, we would say those angles are congruent. They have the exact same measure. An angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. So the key word here is bi. The prefix bi means two. So let me write that on here. Two. So if you can remember, bi means two, like a bicycle has two wheels. You'll remember an angle bisector cuts it into two equal parts. So here's an example. We had angle PVC, okay, and then we put a ray in, angle, or excuse me, ray VR, and ray VR is an angle bisector. It cut this large angle into two equal 44 degree angles. Bisector is crucial to understanding some of the problems you'll face on the test. Okay, adjacent angles. Adjacent means next door. 
Okay, so two angles in the same plane with a common vertex and a common side, but no common interior points. That's the technical definition, but angles one and two, these are adjacent angles. They're right next to each other. They share a side, okay? So think about if you live in an apartment, the people that share the wall with you, those are your adjacent neighbors. Okay, so let's do a little practice here. Angle A, E, B. So I'm going to highlight the angles, and I would encourage you to do the same on your paper or use your pencil or pen to trace. That's angle A, E, B, and angle B, E, D. Okay, so we know those angles are right next to each other. They actually share B, E, so they're adjacent. Um, I don't have any information that they're congruent, but I do know that they add up to 180 degrees since this line here is straight. Okay, so I know that this is a linear pair. Anytime two angles are right next to each other and add up to 180, we call that a linear pair. Here we're given angle D, E, C. So we can see we're talking about this angle here. And angle A, E, B, and we're talking about this angle here. Okay, they're actually not right next to each other. Um, so they're not congruent, they're not adjacent, they're just a couple of angles. Um, Next, complementary angles. Complementary, all you've got to remember is 90. Complementary angles add up to 90. Supplementary angles add up to 180. So if I tell you that you have a pair of supplementary angles and one of the angles is 80, uh, you should be able to figure out that the other angle has to be 100, since 80 and 100 add up to 180. Okay? I might also say, give me the supplement of um, 100. And you would simply take 100 from 80 or from 180 and get 80. Uh, if I say, give me the complement, give me the complement of 50 degrees. Well, you'll just take your 50 and subtract it from 90. What do you get? 40. Okay. So if we look over here at our examples, which two angles here are complementary? A B, A C, or B C? It's pretty easy to see that B and A. 53 and 37 add up to 90, so those are complementary. As opposed to which ones are supplementary? Well, that's got to be 27 and 53. So A and C add up to 180, they're supplementary. Okay, here's that linear pair again. Supplementary angles that are adjacent to one another, so 133 and 47 add up to 180. And they're right next to each other, they're adjacent, so they're a linear pair. And make sure you're pausing to write this information down periodically throughout this video lecture. All right, so let's do a little practice. We've got an angle here. We've got an angle here. We've got some information right here. We know this box means 90 degrees. 25 plus 65 equals 90. So what are these angles? These angles are complementary. Okay, so you know that they add up to 90, so they're complementary. Here, 45 and 135, I don't even have to add them up to see that they form a straight line. Okay, this whole straight line here is this angle plus this angle. And I know every straight line is 180 degrees. And when they add up to 180 degrees, we call that oops, supplementary. Again, sorry about the bad writing. I'll work on getting better. What do you see here? Supplementary. Adds up to 180. See, this is easy. Okay, we see a right angle. They've got to add up to 90, so complementary. Okay, so we can find the complement of an angle just by subtracting it from 90. We can find the supplement of an angle just by subtracting it from 180. You've got to remember, complement means 90. And supplement means 180. Get that down in your notes. Okay, so find the supplement of F. This goes right back to what we were just talking about. Since it says supplement, we'll start with 180. We subtract 116.5. And whatever we get is going to be the supplement of 116.5. And that actually ends up being 63.5. Okay. If we want to find the complement, I'll start with 90, subtract 32, and you'll see that we get, what, 58? So the complement of 32 is 58. Keep in mind, the supplement of 32 would be something different, since it's subtracted from 180. 
Okay, next concept. Vertical angles are two non-adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines, and they're congruent. Okay, so angles 1 and 3 are vertical angles. They're opposite from each other, and they're congruent. This angle, ooh, I don't like that. Let's get rid of that and that. Okay. You'll notice that angle 1 looks about the exact same as angle 3. And they are. Angle 2 and angle 4, they are vertical angles as well, so they are congruent as well. Okay, we love vertical angles because they're always congruent and it's just easy. So name a pair of vertical angles. Well, we got a couple pairs. We have HMJ and LMK. Okay, so these are each vertical angles. We could also do HML and JMK. So these are also going to be vertical angles okay this is more like what you could expect on the test it's really simple though you already see that okay we've got a pair of vertical angles so i know they're congruent so i know 5x minus 10 has to equal 60. okay a little simple two-step algebra problem here is going to get you your answer we're going to add 10 to each side this eliminates, of course, you've got 5x equals 70, all right? And when you divide each side by 5, divided by 5, this eliminates, you're left with x, and 70 divided by 5 is 14. So we're able to solve for x in two steps. We wouldn't have been able to do that if we didn't know these angles were congruent. Okay, here we've got x's. And we've got y. So let's deal with the x's first. We know that this angle and this angle are what? That's right, they're vertical angles, which means they are congruent. If you just look at those two angles, you should be able to tell that those angles look about the same. So I'm going to set them up equal to each other. Okay. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. Subtract 4x. And I'm just going to combine my steps here. Okay, since I'm subtracting 4x, I'm also going to add 16, add 16, okay? So all I'm doing is combining steps. Gets rid of that, gets rid of that. I've got 2x over here, and over here I've got 22. And if we divide each side by 2, x equals 11. So I could plug in my 11 right here. Okay, 4 times 11 is 44, plus 6 makes a total of 50. And I just want to make sure, because if this is a test, I, I want to make sure I'm getting it right. So if I plug in 11 over here, I do 6 times 11, and I get 66. 66 minus 16 is 50, so it does check out about 50. Okay, now we've got to deal with this down here. All right. All I know right now is that X is 50. I don't know what Y is. However, I know that if this angle here is 50, then this angle right here, since it forms a straight line, has to be its supplement. And what is the supplement of 50? Well, we just take 180, since that's what supplementary means, subtract our 50, come up with 130. So I already know, let me erase a little bit so you can see a little clearer. Okay, I already know now that this whole quantity has to equal 130. And I also know that x is 11. Whoops, that's a bad 11. Okay, but if we do 8 times 11, I know this is going to be 88, right? So I know 88 plus 7y equals 1. 30. Okay, I would subtract 88 from each side, divide by 7, and I've got y. So again, a simple problem just takes a few steps to get there. Um, let's skip on ahead here. We've got a pair of vertical angles, set them equal to each other. Uh, here we know that these angles are supplementary. So I already know that this angle plus this angle has to equal 180. Once I've set up the problem, it's just a simple algebra problem. Uh, we talked about an angle bisector, which means it cuts it in half, so this angle equals this angle. 
And let's just go ahead and skip to the summary here. All right, so let's go over some of the terms we learned. Okay, we learned about angles and their measure. Okay, angles are just two rays with a common endpoint, and we measure them with degrees. Okay, we talked about vertical angles. We talked about adjacent angles, complementary angles, supplementary angles, linear pairs, oops, uh, angle bisectors. Okay. So just to review here real quick, okay, vertical angles are congruent. So those are going to always be equal to each other. Okay, adjacent just means next door. Complementary adds up to 90. Supplementary adds up to 180. If those supplementary angles are right next to each other and form a straight line, okay, that's a linear pair. So linear pairs add up to 180 as well. It just takes it one step further. And an angle bisector cuts it into two congruent angles. Okay, make sure you took good notes and make sure you take the quiz that's posted on the video after this. As always, if you need help, just text me at my text number it's right here. Don't forget, you can also visit my website for help. Um, I'm always available to assist students who are wanting to be successful. Okay, for Benchmark 3, this is Mr. Wolf signing out.